What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. In this one, we're putting the finishing touches on this project. We're gonna be talking about this screen door, screen panels, and this fire pit. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. All right, Ant, what do we got here? We got ourselves some deck boards. We got a couple deck boards, and what are we building this into? We're gonna make a door out of it. Screen door. Screen door. We've already made one of them, and people wanted to see how we were building these, so we figured, you know, let's wait on the second one, and uh, give them a little taste. We'll show you how we did it. And you thought I was crazy when I said, well, you didn't think I was crazy, but you were like, really, we gotta build a freaking, yeah. why can't we buy a door? Not easier to build a window. <sighs> That's true, but, after we did the first one, it turned out freaking amazing. Turned out well. I know that you were happy about it and the uh -huh. execution, my God. Somebody left a comment. It was like the Ed Bassmaster. Just look at it. Yeah, look, Just at, look it. at it. I, I, I was truly like that. So we've got one side of this built. We're gonna show you how uh, he's gonna put this together. And the biggest thing that we figured with the assembly of this was pocket screws. It was really the only way that we could get this all assembled with hidden fasteners. Hidden fasteners. You see, we've got all of these pocket holes. So. We decided it had to be a two ply door. We've built two of them for each opening. And then we sandwich them together and there'll be a couple exposed screws like we have on the other one. We'll show you how we do that, but it turned out great. And show you how to, show you how to assemble it. Watch and learn. Watch and learn, baby. Anything's possible if you set your mind to it. Never give up on yourself or a great idea, but always be ready to say, this definitely might not work. I, was, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work, but it did and it turned out beautiful. Nice. Let's go. So what, a good tip is clamping. And what clamping does is I have these two two by sixes that act as like a subfloor that's flat. And when you clamp everything down and my faces are touching that, it lets you get that smooth transition. So clamping it down tight allows me to know that my face is nice and flush. Almost. <laughs> 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 
That was a good scaring noise. You every time. That noise is hilarious. See if I reacted. Yeah, you really didn't at all. <laughs> On the inside, I can tell you're scared. <laughs> this morning, I was scared this morning when Ann just was standing next to man. <laughs> really? You just threw your phone. Hmm. So this you gotta clean that up some. No, I can't. Uh, how much you have to check again, maybe? maybe? Like okay, a, baby. Okay, okay. I'm a little I'll, bit I'll, I'll test it now. Maybe because this. Uh, need, uh, where do you finish this? Because yeah, this is good. So that one, see the little the little nick right there. Yeah. No, on uh, the back. The, you cut the blade more. Yeah. This. Right. Yep. This is the other one, right? Can they, when they, yes, they, right. So now that we have the door assembled, the next step is going to be the hinges. What makes this a little bit easier is I can determine where I set my hinges so I don't have to worry about like math too much. So the first thing I'll do is I'll set my top hinge at five inches off the door. Steve, you're going to have to hold that for me. Make sure it doesn't move. I'll set my bottom hinge. We'll do... 70 inches. And then my middle hinge, I want to be roughly in the middle of the door. 36, 43. But if I'm on that hinge, I'll set it at three feet. Steve, hold that again. Bud, watch your fingers. There you go. I'll set it at 36. <laughs> Our middle hinge will be different. It's going to be a self closing hinge, so I can't mark this. I got to get that hinge down here. Now I just have to route out all the hinges so they fit nice and hinge worthy. <laughs> So now that I have all the hinges routed out on the door, I can come to the jam now and I can start getting my hinges prepared on the jam. And what was nice about it is I had, I measured five inches down from my top hinge and I want, I'm gonna aim for a quarter inch reveal at the top. So now in the jam, I'll just measure down five and a quarter to set my hinge to create that reveal. So that, now I know that's where my top hinge needs to go. So now that we have our door up here, I have my hinges on the door and the jam. Um, a little tip I'll show you. I like to loosen my screws a little bit. On the door as well. And what that does, it allows for when I go to marry these hinges together, there's a little bit of play and wiggle room to get them in and I can drop my pins in and send it tight. Ta-da! No, 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 no. Pull the corner inside.
smooth as a blade. I gotta still put a bevel on this side. You need? Like this is a square end over here. So if I put a, a blade on it. Yeah, blade, yeah. Just come a blade back. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I'll take a blade off this yeah, one. Yeah, same time. One blade within from the corner. It's always cutting metal like this always gives me the <laughs> heebie jeebies. <laughs> Now we wanted a blade lift off this one. Yeah. Ends all good. Yeah, good. good. All right, let me get lined up. Got our screen track going in. couple more screws in here once they're all in and uh, we're gonna wait to put the screens in until this is a little bit more cleaned up and we have it kind of finalized so they don't get all dirty because you know they'll be a pain to clean so we want to minimize that and should be good to go what do you got going on computer stuff computer stuff yeah what do you got going on a lot <laughs> a lot definitely a lot so much. Hilarious. <laughs> if it falls, will it break? Where'd you go? <laughs> it's just foam, right? Like if I, sh if I go up and shake it, it'll just... Mike's gonna come home and be like, why are you climbing our tree? <laughs> A little bit more. There we go. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Woo, just melt. <laughs> Hang on, don't. Well, I'm not doing it. I'm just, you know. Secure anything. I'm not securing nothing. The, according to this picture, it goes the other way. But it would make sense if this were off the bottom, so I don't know. Another way. Like that on top? Yeah. Alright, yeah, that looks like that picture. Okay, nice. That's a good start. Okay, so basically this gets mounted. This probably isn't important. I don't think you need these. <laughs> we got this is gonna go from our this? That's a piece of metal, it looks like. It's gonna go from the valve to the unit, and then we'll have to get our own flex line for the pipe into the valve. Don't show me the back. Oh, here we go. That goes into this. Okay. Into this? Yeah. No, no, we're going to this. Oh, no, this is the pilot. Yeah. We need some ideas. They're crucial right now. Why does that come separate? Is this? Yeah. Huh. Protection, I guess. All right. Let's see. Let's see how this works. Let's see what these spacers are all about. Where do you think that plane's going? Spice. I don't have time to guess where planes are going right now. I understand that's something I would normally love, but <laughs> I just can't right now. All right, fine. I won't tell you. I'm gonna guess Jacksonville. No, I'm gonna guess Philly. It's flying into Philly. It's flying into Philly, yeah. From where? Jacksonville. You'll never know. Tell me, come on! I guess. <laughs> I guess. I said you Jacksonville. You want to play the fun game? I said Jacksonville. Where's it coming from? Dallas. Oh. Texas. Dallas sucks. Go birds. Go birds. All right. So we're getting to our fire pit install here. And we've got the uh, Serafina block, and we're just gonna install some vents here. Nice thing about this, Nico Lock is also a distributor for uh, a ton of accessories like this. So we are using a Fire Gear burner assembly. 
It's our first time using this, but it's uh, super nice because it just comes with everything. It's like a kit and it has everything you need. The ones that we've used in the past, you gotta buy vents separately, like everything separate and you really gotta like piecemeal it. So this is super nice. That's so cool. <laughs> Oh damn, it actually does look like it's working. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sick. Hey, there's a cloud in front of it. Ow. Oh, it works. Nick, do you see anything right now? Oh, I see like a little bit of light. Here it comes, here it comes. Okay. It's only like, it's only like a little tiny bit over the corner. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you folded them up, they're damaged. It says do not use if damaged. Oh yeah, I only see it a little bit. It's kind of boring when it's cloudy. Let's see it coming out, okay? Uh-oh, Can't see it through my glasses. Yeah, these are broken. Whoa, what is that? That's your piece of welding glass. Oh, that's cool. Why is there three of them? Because the welding glass. Look at them. We got this locked in for justice. It's time to throw on the cap. We're not gonna glue the cap yet because check out our ignition setup right here. And this is the original ignition. This is not the remix to ignition. Uh, so what we have here is our ignition switch here. No battery in it yet, but uh, that's gonna give us our spark. And then we have our gas control here. So. What I like about this system, this is from Fire Gear, you can push this in and that's gonna give you your pilot light and it's got a separate gas line just to go to uh, that ignition. So in the past we've used other push button ignitions and they haven't worked super well. They're a little finicky. So once we get the top on here, I'll show you exactly what that setup looks like. But I'm excited about this because the push button ignition is a really nice feature when it works, you know, seamlessly. All right, so now I am dry fitting these little accent stones to go around, which is a little bit tedious because it's an irregular stone going around an irregular stone with a not perfectly regular cut. So I'm kind of just dry fitting them, getting them where they're gonna kind of be. And then when I get to the last one, I'll be able to kind of see if I need to cut that one down, but I can't really set anything until I get to that last piece. So. This is just like a little uh, meditative exercise for me because I'm just taking my time cutting some stones. <laughs> and visually all I'm really trying to do is make sure that the corners line up. These corners line up because that's really what you would notice in all this irregular, irregularity. Irregularity, that's hard to say. <laughs> irregularity. <laughs> Oh, sweet. 
Alright, let's check out what progress we got. It's cut. I just gotta put, cut this a little bit. I'll slip it in, and then it's cut all across the top. Beep. Oh, nice! That looks awesome. Premier sound, baby. Ant, what do you think? Of what? Do you think we're gonna make it? Make what? Finish. Oh, what, uh, the UFB edge? Yeah. I'm gonna do my magic, I'm gonna make oh. it happen. So we were short on the UFB edge hemlock, and then we decided we need to order more. We ordered more, we're still short. We're still, still short. short, like a little bit. Thank God, Catherine went to the shop this morning. She uh, said, I think there's one piece there. There was one piece there, it might get us there. Yeah, see what happens. I don't know how we how we miss. We did it together too. I know. Well, I do square footage. You did linear feet. Well, I converted the square footage into did linear you, feet. That's where the problem is. No, I don't think I so. Didn't think there could have been a mistake there. No, there wasn't. There was not. There was not. Because I even figured it's it's five inch exposure, so it's not like two boards. No, I get one that. Foot. So I don't. It was like two point four boards per per foot. I don't know. You, you must have math wrong. No, we both did. No, I gave you the square footage. We did the square footage together, and then that was wrong too. No, the square footage wasn't wrong. God. Everything looking good before we lock it in. Like over here, we need to uh, straighten this up, make it look real nice. And yes, persuader is right there. Why do you need the persuader? For when I'm kicking things in. Okay. I don't have to use the I can use the other ones if you want. But if I'm kicking the edges. In yeah, I yeah. I thought I was gonna need it, but now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I will. Okay. I could use a smaller. Are you sure? I think so. I All can right. also use no. a smaller. No, you're good. Okay. You're good. You're good. All right. Concrete Kathy's gonna make sure everything's looking nice and straight, and then we're gonna lock it in for justice with that concrete edge. And right now, I'm gonna start on this uh, little step detail. So that's what we got.
now we're really on to some of the finishing touches. Mulch, we'll be doing sod next week after some irrigation work gets done. And the next thing you'll see from this project is the full time lapse, all of the finished shots. This thing turned out amazing and it's gonna look even better. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. And until next time, this has been Premier Outdoor Living. Thank you.